I'll just sound negative. I thought it sucked. It sucked. It sucked. It sucked. Hello, everybody. This is Michael Beverly. Welcome to my channel. It sucked. It sucked. It sucked. It sucks. It sucks. So I did a re a response to a response of Mike Winger's response to the Satan's Guide to the Bible, where Mike Winger slanders the motives of the scholars and just paints them with a broad brush of being evil people in league with Satan and blah, blah, blah. Um, the, the creator of that video gave me a nice uh, compliment. I pinned that comment. I suggest if you're interested in this subject to go check that out. I appreciate all the support on my channel. Now, th this video, however, is a little bit different. So this was, this was a, a, a live stream that Michael Jones, um, inspiring philosophy hosted with Eric Manning of the channel Testify, Rob, who's with Sentinel Apologetics, or his name's Sentinel Apologetics, and Fan with Exploring Reality. Now, Rob and Fan, I am not familiar with, other than I did have a brief, quick chat with Rob in, in Kip Davis's... Um, BC Me was actually written in the judgment of all... Sorry, guys. I love that part. BC me. <laughs> it just makes me chuckle every time. Live stream today. And Rob graciously said he would entertain an idea of doing a, a stream with me. So we'll see if he if he's interested in that. Um, I sent him an email and said, hey, this is what I want to talk about. Kind of maybe throw some ideas at me. Um, and then test. So testify. I've watched some of his stuff. Now, not like all, most of these apologetics, like, you know, the the you know not the william lane craig ones which i kind of detest william lane craig because he lies so much but um and then it it goes you know there's a varying degree of of guys like jay warner wallace and lee strobel are just completely slimy liars and so i really don't like them i don't mind saying i don't like them but a guy like eric eric here and testify like i don't buy his arguments i don't agree with his positioning but he doesn't seem like a slimy person. He seems like a nice guy. And the same thing with, with uh, Michael Jones of Inspiring Philosophy. Smart guy, well-spoken. And so this video was different in Mike Winger's in that one. It, this one lasted like two and a half or some hours or something like that, where Mike was doing his regular 10 questions and he devoted maybe a little under a half an hour to it. So he just, he kind of highlighted it. Now, Mike Winger commented and then this, put a comment in their video like, hey guys, great job. You know, you responded to more stuff than I had time for, blah, blah, blah. And um, you know, I would I would love to hear Mike Winger's response to my complaint because I think what Mike Winger did in slandering people and lying about them is very unchristian like. So I will credit I will credit these guys, especially I think I, I think I hear I hear this most from from Rob of extending graciousness to the other side and look i want to be that way now i'm not going to be that way with william lynn craig j warner wallace or lee strobel because those guys are professional liars and i find them detestable i am however is an ex-christian with nearly four decades in and i'm going to call bullshit on some of the stuff that they say about about their about christianity in general and in some of their responses or in accusations against the Satan's Guide to the Bible, like things that they say about that are either non sequiturs or I find ludicrous or just downright dishonest. So let's get to it. Could it be Satan? And thanks for joining me. If you find this stuff entertaining or helpful, or even if you hate me and you just want to troll my comments, please follow. Thanks. <laughs> there so, you go. Um, I mean, it's just, I just got to be honest, right? And so uh, I'm told not to. <laughs> You know, by counter apologist, quit sugarcoating it and faking and smiles and all this other stuff. No, but seriously, I thought it was bad. Um, I just. All right, Eric, if you say it's bad without qualifying, what you mean is you don't like the arguments. It's not bad in the sense that it's entertaining. It's got it's approaching 900,000 views and it's got you all talking. So it's not bad in that sense. Like in most objective standards, it's a great video. I mean, don't you wish you'd made a video that got a million views in a month? Come on. Be honest here. Even if I was sympathetic, like let's say I was an atheist. Hey, there ain't nothing stopping you from being an atheist except your own presuppositions, your own bias, and your own desire 
to feel good about what happens after death. Because if you look at if you look at stuff logically, Eric, you become an atheist. And and that you know what I think that's why. So if if you look at my video and why I call Mike Winger out for slandering these scholars, is a vast majority of the scholars that come out and trigger Christians are former Christians. Now, come on, Bart. Bart Ehrman, you look. I know you guys disagree with Bart Ehrman, but don't question his motives. The man loved Jesus. He was a pastor. Come on, Eric. It's way more fun being an atheist. Trust me. And and I, I was sympathetic to the points that are being made by the scholars that are on the video, which the scholars themselves weren't really the problem with the video. The problem with the video is that it's an hour and a half long, and there's only about. 20 minutes or less of con of substance. Yeah. Well, we live in a TikTok world, and I'll join you in denouncing that the attention span of the human race has shrunk. But don't say, don't you you say it 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 only lack <sighs> mm. of of course it was entertaining. That's why you even came across your radar. If he had made an hour and a half video going over the points like you do in this two and a half an hour thing, you think he'd have a million views? Come on. And that this is another point that I'm gonna hammer home in a little bit after Michael Jones says a few things. I'm gonna call him out and I'm gonna point out some stuff that's that's just it's really ridiculous if you think about it. So yeah, okay, Eric. It wasn't. It didn't have three hours of technical listening to you know Dr. Josh and Kip Davis and Michael Jones and and Rob and all all you guys and people that talk like me. Like most people wouldn't sit through that. It was entertaining. It was funny. It it was well produced and it's got people thinking. And you should be happy about that. You should be happy because if you're not afraid of the information and you're not afraid of the knowledge, then you should be happy that this was made because it makes people think. Anyone that watches this that wasn't thinking about this stuff before and get, you know what you hear atheists like myself say? Read the Bible. Like I'm on almost every week on my, on my, I do some little scripture thing and I, I'm telling, I'm, I'm always saying, if you're a Christian, ask yourself, be convicted by the Holy Spirit when he says to you, why is this atheist know the Bible and read the Bible and love this history and love to study the Bible more than me? Like that, that should be the conviction in your heart. So seen from that perspective, Eric, this Satan's guide to the Bible should be embraced by Christians. It should be embraced by you and thinkers as heaven sent. That's the problem that I had with it. It just was very ham-fisted, too much attempts to try to be funny. Um, there was a lot of kind of ad hominem crap, like... Because it was funny! Jeez! Are you guys that much a stick in the mud? So you, you can't... Look, I can laugh at myself. Come on, can you guys laugh at yourself? Like, let's loosen up a little bit. The video had a lot of funny stuff in it. And I'll give you another hint. Go watch any of the non-stamp collector or the dark matter videos, the animation ones. They're funny. That's why those guys are so successful. You can't, like most people aren't going to sit and listen to an hour and a half or two hours or, or even an hour of just droll academic stuff. Church lady, I'm not going to whitewash it. I let my church down. They're just not. There's got to be some entertainment value. And, and that's why that Saturday Night Live skit never gets old. Could it be Satan? And if you didn't find that some of that stuff funny, then okay, fine. Maybe you just have a weird, different sense of humor. But some of it was funny. It was. You know, pastors are keeping secrets from you. They just want to keep their jobs. They're trying to hide things from you. And I'm thinking, my pastor doesn't know any of this stuff. He's a good guy. Like... Okay, well, then, Eric, you're just saying that your pastor didn't go to a seminary or he's not educated. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I had pastors in my life that didn't even go to college. Like, 
you can you can get ordained without having a, the Princeton Seminary degree. But what what argument are you making when you say, well, my pastors didn't know any of that stuff? Like if they didn't even know the argument and the other side, how are they qualified? Why are you just like blanket accusing pastors of hiding things from you? No, Eric, he did not blanketly accuse pastors of hiding things from their congregation. Go back and listen to what Bart Ehrman said. He said, if your pastor went to a seminary, like a Protestant seminary, like Princeton, but he didn't say only Princeton, he said like that, then your pastor knows these things. Like, where do you get off saying he was blanketing every pastor? All, look, my mom was a pastor. My mom didn't even have a college education. Um, it, it just totally ignores that, you know, a lot of seminaries actually do do a good job of addressing these things. Wait, so are you saying a lot of seminaries do a crappy job of addressing those things? I, like, I don't get your point. If a seminary teaches these things, that's what that's what the, that's what your opposition is saying. They're saying, hey, look, the seminaries teach these things. I'm not sure you realize what you just said there. And frankly, the pastors just aren't bothered by them. And so they're not going to, like, bring them up with their congregation. So wait. So so now, Eric, you're admitting the entire premise of the Satan's guide is true. Like you're actually agreeing with the whole point of the video. Some pastors don't don't are, aren't bothered by those things, so they don't bring them up with their congregation. That's the whole freaking point. That's the point. So what you're what you're saying is okay. So what you're saying, like, um, imagine I want to go to your church, Eric, and I say, hey, how does your pastor how does your pastor feel about troubling subjects? And you say. They, He's not bothered by any troubling subjects. He's never going to talk about it, but come to my church. Now I'm a thinker and I like, I don't, I, I want to know stuff. I don't, I don't want, I don't want a pastor deciding for me what I'm allowed to know or not know. And guess what? I don't have time to go to seminary. So it's nice to have somebody, you know, give me the, give me the, the you know, the, the, in a nutshell version. Thanks for being a part of our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe so we can continue to inspire and encourage you. We Look, if Christians want to go to a church where they don't have to engage their brain, there's plenty of offerings. Am I right? Can I get an amen? So I don't get your point here that you're saying that some pastors don't want to have these discussions. So they just don't tell their congregation. I would respectfully ask you to reconsider that position. And the whole reason we're even having these discussions, which is something you guys seem to forget, is because of YouTube and the internet. I, I think I'm older than all you guys, so I can I can say, I can say with extreme confidence that back in the day before the internet, I didn't know none of this stuff. And 99% of America didn't know none of this stuff. The only reason we're talking about it now is Thank you, Jesus, for the internet. The very idea that of what you just said, Eric, is part of the problem. Because you're basically saying that a lot of pastors gatekeep information from their congregation because they think it's not important or they've resolved it. Do you understand how problematic that is? You're treating adults like children and you're gatekeeping information and the point of the Satan's Guide to the video is it seems nefarious. It doesn't seem like, oh, we trust the pastor, so we don't need to know stuff because he's figured it out for us. I didn't like the mm. suspicion that they're trying to throw out there, the, the kind of the shade that, well, you're just committed to inerrancy kind of. I don't know the actual numbers, but there's a lot of people committed to inerrancy. Case in point, Mike Winger. So it isn't just a non-issue. It's important. It's important to point out to people. And I just realized something as I was as I was doing that last little, I was doing the little editing. I was thinking, and I was wondering why, why all the hubbub? Why, why? And I realized. The reason Christians 
don't the reason Christians don't want the discussion is because they know that a certain number of people are going to dissent and and ultimately a certain percentage will leave the church. Now, what happened with Hector Avalos, Bart Ehrman, uh, Dennis McDonald, and on and on and on? Kip, Dr. Kip Davis. What happened? There's, there are they, you guys aren't going to claim they're stupid, right? So here's very smart people who looked at these issues that, that you seem to be bothered that are being floated out there, and they decided Christianity wasn't true. Wow. So let, 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 let's be honest. Can we be honest here? If, imagine if every Christian this next Sunday at church, the pastor said, we're going to spend the, we're going to spend our hour and a half together watching this video. And this next week, I want you all to think about it. And then I'm going to preach a message on, you know, like why you, why you can not worry about those things. Now, one that that would never happen, of course, but why wouldn't it happen? Because you all know that a certain number of people would, would leave Christianity when they start investigating this stuff and they start thinking about this stuff. So at the end of the day, you guys are afraid that people are going to disagree with you. So it seems like you're saying, holy crap. Some people will interpret this stuff wrong. In other words, not how I see it, because I are, woohoo! Yes, Jesus loved me, and he gave me the truth, and those other guys are kind of dumb. We can continue to inspire and encourage you. See, you guys know if people are exposed to actual textual criticism and historical criticism and all these arguments like you know a certain percentage will leave the church that's just how it's going to be now they could be wrong and i guess you could argue i guess you could say well if jesus is real and christianity is real and these people are now going to go to hell then it's best it's it would be best if we play mommy and daddy gatekeeper and don't let those we'll keep those people going to heaven so we should we should we should keep this information away from them hmm. Hmm. yeah that's a good idea quit treating people like children and respect their ability to think for themselves. Now, I know in some cases, people don't think very well, but we know God has amazing things. I tend to fall on the side of let people figure stuff out for themselves. And all of those crit, all those critiques are wrong. I've I've done the work for you, so really you shouldn't watch this video. And this video is harmful. And pastors like even out of your own mouth you said some pastors have decided this stuff's not all that important so they just don't talk to their congregation about it that that's what you said if you take out all that fluff and then you just talk about the arguments not many people would watch it it wouldn't have close pushing a million views do you not get that stop I mean are you guys just jealous it was so successful? Why don't you guys make a video, Jesus' Guide to the Bible, and get an animator and explain to everybody how... Here's the thing that you guys... Right, let's get to the next clip, and then I'm going to point out the, the hypocrisy here and just the ridiculousness of your position. Then it's just scholars basically kind of reading out of their books the same standard stock objections that you, Mike, um, that, that you, Rob, that you, Than, uh, and myself have been answering over and over and over again. Um, maybe it's a good introduction to people who 
I haven't heard these things before, but it's so one-sided that it's not really a good introduction. It just comes across, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say it, Mike Winger's right, propaganda. Are you that, I'm talking to you, Eric, are you that, uno, like, are you that unaware of, like, reality? How many, what percentage of Christians in America listen to you, Eric? And I'll include Rob and Fan and, and Michael and everybody else that talks about scholarly stuff. And, you know, I'm not talking about Alan Parr and Mike Winger and, you know, non-scholars that have big channels or Joel Olstein. What percentage of Americans actually know this stuff? I mean, American Christians. And when you say, oh, Mike Winger's right, it's just propaganda. Well, what do you think happens every Sunday across America in every Sunday school? That's that's not propaganda. Uh, let me grant you, Eric, that all of the true churches that actually follow Jesus correctly are not spewing propaganda. I'll grant you that. How many tens of millions of children in false churches are getting propaganda put into their ear every Sunday. 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, some number of millions, right? Can we agree on that? Or are you going to tell me that you agree with the Calvinists and the Methodists and the Presbyterians and the Catholics and the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons and the liberal Christians and, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, right? So can we agree that at least a very healthy percentage of children are given a false message, you know, every Sunday? And can you also agree with me that if you're going to accuse the Satan's guide of the Bible of being propaganda, that 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 cuts both ways? Because what you're saying is, oh, it's one sided. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? How, how many messages in my life did I hear about, like, say, for instance, the Exodus or Daniel and the lion's den or, you know, gospel messages about Jesus and so forth and so on, okay, for nearly four decades. And you're saying an hour and a half is, that's one-sided. Like I had 40 years, like if I was still a Christian, I'd be pushing 50 years of not knowing that stuff. The very first time, and you know, I was an atheist already and I said, no, that can't be true. The very first time I heard that the Exodus was in question it was after I was an atheist. I'm going, no, that there's just no way I need to see, like, I need to see something to believe that that's it. There's no way that's possible. Of course, of course. I watched the Charlton Heston movie. It's real. And I read the Bible. Why would anyone make that up? It's it's it it's real. And I you know, I'm not talking about the supernatural stuff. I'm just talking about the Exodus itself. When I was an atheist and I first heard that, I thought, no, that's that's just ridiculous. So when you say one-sided, what you're saying is that I had 40 years of being told the story of Moses, including a Disney movie, and, but an hour and a half, that's the propaganda when somebody somebody tells me that archaeologists have a problem and that the, the evidence isn't there to support the Bible story. Now, you all are going to say, oh, well, the, the scholars say, a large scale exodus and maybe the number was an exaggeration maybe it wasn't two million people dude it doesn't matter i was taught something that was a lie by all accounts of archaeologists by all accounts of historians that are experts the bible story was not literally true and that's why inerrancy does matter because i was taught that as a child and you don't see a problem with that? Do you have a problem when Mormon boys are told 
that Joseph Smith got a special revelation and they're sent on a two-year missions trip to spew their propaganda? Do you have a problem with that? Well, if you do, why is it, even if what I was told was true, which I don't believe was, how is that not problematic for you? Essentially, what you're saying is, if the message is true, it's not propaganda. You don't need to critically think. You don't need to think for yourself. As long as you're told the right thing about Jesus, that's all that matters. You don't need to think. You don't need to read the text. You guys, you guys are part of the problem because if the Jesus story is true, you should be praising the Satan's Guide to the Bible and you should be spreading it out to every Christian you know. Don't you care about the people that go to Joel Olstein's church? Go watch some video clips of Benny Hinn who stole tens of millions of dollars from gullible, non-thinking Christians. Many of them too poor to afford the donations they made so that Benny Hinn could live in a mansion and drive Bentleys and travel around the world in a private jet. Stop. I was lied to as a child and it pisses me off and it pisses me off to see guys like you on here trying to act like somebody who's presenting scholars and you're and you're de you're oh it's just maddening you should be praising that guy he's bringing people to the table he's bringing people that people that are interested in that, you got somebody to teach the, you know, teach them the right way. Just like the Mormons are doing to the Mormon boys, teaching them the truth. And just like the Catholics are doing, teaching the truth. Just like the, the uh, Calvinists are doing, teaching the truth. And the Holy Roller Pentecostals. I hope you hear in my voice how damaged I was by Christianity. And you guys are perpetuating that by glorifying by glorifying the idea that people shouldn't think and it's wrong and and it's and it's very disgusting quit being gatekeepers start having more honest dialogue don't be afraid of it and the thing is is i know your position is that you're right i know that's your position woohoo I got the right Jesus. Woohoo! I got the right Jesus. I, I was born to the right parents. I'm in the elect. I am special. God loves me. No. If that's your God, that's that's why people, that's why some of us are anti-theist and anti-religion and why we come across as being very angry at Christianity. Because it's this exclusivity that you have in your mind that you're right. That your knowledge is better than everyone else's knowledge. And we should just trust you. And we should be suspicious of anybody that leaves the fold. Bart Ehrman. Oh, when Bart Ehrman was going to Moody, he must have been faking it. When Bart Ehrman, oh, when he, when he was a pastor, he must have been faking it. Stop. Stop with this slanderous bullshit. Stop being afraid of knowledge. You know, I read other stuff besides just books by Bart Ehrman. I didn't even know Bart Ehrman existed until I was an atheist. I didn't even know, like, take something like mythicism you guys all like to mock. I didn't even know that existed when I was a Christian. I thought evolution was a lie. For a long time in my Christian walk, I thought the earth was 6,000 years old. I have an ex-wife from Ohio who still thinks dinosaurs never existed. Now, thankfully, my kids all mock their mother. I gave money to people like Benny Hinn. I was taken advantage of. I was lied to. 
And what you guys are doing right now is perpetuating that. Stop. Just stop. Because even if your message was true, the way you guys have gone about it is why I reject it. I'll say that right now. If, if your guys' message is true, I'll take hell. I'll reject Jesus. And it's not because I want to sin. I sin way less now that I'm an atheist than I did as a Christian. I sin way more as a Christian. So stop with that. It's not that I want to sin. It's I'm disgusted. Disgusted with the exclusivity. You know why? Because if God's really going to send all of those false Christians, even Ray Comfort, not that I like Ray Comfort, and all the Muslims and all the Hindus, if God's sending them all to hell, I'll join them. In fact, I'll sacrifice my life for them. I know I'm not worthy, but I'd still do it. And unlike Jesus, I'll take death forever, I'll take hell forever, not three days. That's weak. Because I love people and I hate suffering. And I'm just tired of this. I'm, it, it, you know, this part of the reason I do this, this channel is the catharsis I get from my 40, nearly 40 years of being lied to by people like you guys. Because even if you're telling the truth about some or all of it, it's still just like lies because you're not trusting me and you didn't trust me when I was a kid to figure it out and learn it from myself. You guys, you guys hate stuff like the Satan's Guide to the Bible because you know where it leads because knowledge leads to freedom. Let me quote the great Jay-Z. Life starts when the church ends. Um, the main thing that just was, it was really frustrating to watch, I think, because mm -hmm. um, it wasn't even so much the one-sidedness that bothered me. It was the mockery that came with it. Um, yeah. That, that was what bothered me a lot. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. If your view of the world and reality is true, then the Satan's guide for the Bible creator is lost, and he's under control of the wicked one, the real Satan. And so am I. I'm lost, deceived. My father is a father of lies. What is the, how does the Bible say to treat people like that? And don't say I'm taking this out of context or it doesn't apply to this. You don't think it's a human being behind that documentary? Flesh and blood person. And he didn't work on that thing alone, obviously. It's a team. 
what is your obligation to them? And what are, also, what is the obligation to the people that are listening to you? Because I'm one of those people that really, and, and Kip knows this about me too, because um, I've talked to him. Like I'm somebody that actually really does care about the data, and I want to read everything I can from all sides of the angles I can to actually figure out what do I believe about the Hebrew Bible. And well, Than, have you learned Hebrew? I highly suggest. Now, I, I particularly like Rabbi Singer, and I know some people he rubs the wrong way, but I, I think he's a good guy. One thing you cannot say about Rabbi Singer is that he's not very intelligent, and he knows the Bible, including the Christian Bible, better than 99% of Christians. Go listen to Rabbi Singer or pick a rabbi that you like or study Hebrew on your own. If you do that, you will find out that it is impossible. It is impossible that Jesus is the Messiah. That's just the fact. That's the truth. Paul and others twisted and changed verses. Paul has phantom verses. Paul refers to verses that don't exist. Paul takes verses out of context. Paul actually changes verses. Most Christians don't know this. Why? Because they don't know Hebrew. So if you really, you know, I, I am not in any way impugning fan your character. I believe what you just said. If you actually do what you just said, you will at the very least move far to the from the position you are you are now. And and it's very revealing to me when when I I I, I did a live stream with Mike um, Lacona, and so I did a little research before I did this interview with him, and I found a place some years ago where he said he was he was. 15% on Christianity isn't true. Now, that's a huge admission for somebody that's a, such a well-respected Bible scholar, 15%. So I asked him, hey, it's been a few years. Where are you now? And he said, well, I hadn't really thought about it. But um, his, his Bayesian posterior, he said, hadn't changed. He's still on 15%. Christianity's not true. That's a huge, huge, huge admission. And he's miles away from guys like Mike Winger. So I am not saying, Than, you, you'll become an atheist or an agnostic or leave Christianity. But if you actually do what you just said and read and study all this stuff, you will move quite a ways away. And then when you do that, you realize, wow, maybe some of the scholars in the Satan's Guide are right about what they're saying. And inerrancy is actually hindering Christianity. And maybe, you know, and maybe you can then extend some, some grace and realize what what you're saying here is just it's it's actually ludicrous I, i'm going to play a little bit more of what you said and then i have another clip to just to prove how ludicrous this idea is that that the satan's guide is some kind of you know damaging mocking propaganda you want to see damaging and mocking and i guess propaganda if you want to call it that just wait for the next clip i'm going to play the the frustrating part about this, for me at least, was that it portrays evangelicals and pastors as people that are not worthy of your trust because they're hiding all the data, while at the same time presenting evangelicals as the people that are presenting this data, and then somehow making these implicit, tacit arguments that like Christians don't need the Bible or Christ, like the Bible's not real, oh, whatever you want to say, right? I, I don't want to say what they're really implying, but they're implying something negative about the Christian faith, it seems like through all this and that's the part that i want to call propaganda it's not the one side in this around any of that stuff it was mm -hmm. the mockery that came with it that made that just makes you feel like hey you're an idiot if you disagree with any of this fan brother you don't need atheist or the satan's guide to mock christians and to call them out for being dishonest just go on youtube every christian calls every other christian they don't agree with as being guilty of propaganda and lies and scandals and being false. You don't need atheists for this, brother. You guys do it to yourself. I just watched a short clip uh, yesterday, I think it was, of uh, Michael Jones, uh, Inspiring Philosophy, gave a, sh it, I think it was in a short actually, I, I don't remember exactly, but he said, people keep asking me what my denomination is, what church I go to, and I'm not gonna tell them, I'm not gonna fall to that trap. And he said, you know, like, I don't necessarily agree with everything my church teaches. And I, and then it was really interesting. He said, you know, I've thrown out false things like warrior, the Orthodox Bible and wearing rosary and, and referring to uh, 
uh, the Eucharist or communion or something like, in other words, he admits that he's done things to deceive his audience because he doesn't want them to know what actual brand of Christianity he is. Now we all know why he doesn't want that. We all, I, mean, I don't even have to say why, why he's, he's afraid to tell, to be honest about what branch of Christianity is. He's afraid of it because he knows what'll happen. So you don't need the Satan's guide and you don't need skeptical or atheist or even not, you know, even liberal Christians, you don't need them to point out the, the untrustworthiness of Christians. You guys have this reputation, and it's well deserved. Let's admit, uh, and you got it all on your own. Let's be honest here. The Satan's Guide to the Bible, yes, it does do some mocking stuff, and it makes some jokes, and it's got some, it's got some funny lines. Yeah, so what? Are you guys really that fragile? Compare that hour and a half, I can find 10,000 or probably 100,000 of hours of stuff on YouTube that denounces the denomination or type of Christianity you're in, which is why Michael Jones is afraid to, to tell his audience what church he goes to, or what denomination. He's afraid because he knows how Christians behave. It's, it's funny. It's actually very, very funny. So... Yeah, you don't need this. You don't need Satan to 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 call Christians out for being untrustworthy, abusive, cruel, to as as being liars and thieves and manipulating and damaging people. You don't need an atheist for that, dude. You guys, you guys, I I could find a thousand Christians if I spent the time. I, I don't have the time to do it. I, it. Fan, tell me what church you go to, and I could easily find probably ten to twenty reasonably big channels that would explain why you're going to hell. So stop already with this. Oh, it, it, it made Christians look bad. Nah, you don't need Satan for that, dude. Yeah, um, it was a very ivory tower. I, I sensed a lot of projection in it, quite honestly. People often accuse others of the very things they're guilty of, and you see that throughout there. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta be freaking kidding me! I, you're you are too intelligent of a person to have said that seriously. Come on, thou shall not lie. It's in your Bible. Try practicing it. They constantly in the documentary put in Jesus's mouth their caricature of Jesus. Funny how that works, isn't it, Michael? That clip that I just played just was a tiny fraction of all the division in Christianity where every other Christian accuses every other Christian of putting their caricature of Jesus in the mouth of Jesus. You can't possibly reconcile guys like Ray Comfort and John MacArthur and Mike Winger and Alan Parr with everybody else with you know father michael or what other pastors have youtube channels that are priests you can't so it might be true that the production of the satan's guide to the bible got some stuff about jesus wrong it might be but guess what you're not going to know because you have no idea what Jesus actually said. You have some presuppositions. You have some claims that your Bible is somewhere between inerrant and, and pretty darn close, depending on who you talk to. Now, I kind of like Mike Lacona because at least he's honest. He says John just made his own, he put his, he projected his own personality into the words of Jesus, because I asked Mike, I said, when when fundamentalists say that Jesus in one gospel says something and then in another gospel says something that's obviously the same line but different, do you think that Jesus literally said both things? And Mike laughed. He said, no, that's ludicrous. Or, you know, I don't know if he said it's ludicrous, but I'm not mischaracterizing him. He said, no, that's that that argument is not true. So. Is Mike Lacona putting words in Jesus' mouth? Is Mike Lacona being led it led by Satan? 
or as Mike Lacona being honest, that when when we as moderns try to figure out what Jesus actually said, we're we're having to do some guesstimations. Is that or is that unfair? Are you are you going to say that everything that everything in Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John is all exactly verbatim what Jesus said? And if you don't say yes, if you don't say yes, I raise my hand and I and I stand on the testimony of the Holy Spirit that every word that is in every gospel is exactly what Jesus said verbatim, then everybody puts words into Jesus' mouth that aren't exactly what Jesus has said. You just hope that you're kind of close. That this is the kind of stuff you guys don't like to admit. Because you know darn well that when the average person hears that, when the average person in the pew understands that, they start asking uncomfortable questions. And this whole video by you guys proves you don't like uncomfortable questions. And even though, even though Eric said, oh, well, you, you guys and me, we answer these questions over and 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 over. You're only answering them for a tiny percentage of Christians in the world. Because most Christians in the world don't study this stuff. They don't know this stuff. They don't have the time and they trust their pastors who are not giving them the whole story, which is the whole point of the Satan's Guide to the Bible. Pastors don't give all the story. They're the ones that are on the ivory tower, Michael. They're the ones. You want to know who's on an ivory tower is Mike Winger. He's on an ivory tower. And Mike Winger and guys like him like and Ken Ham, who are inerrant believers, they look at guys like Mike Lacona, who's an honest historian, and they say, you know, he, this is, this is problematic for Christianity. He's telling the people too much. The Ken Ham position is, Christianity is hurt and Christianity is being destroyed by people that teach anything other than a six-day creation with a six to ten thousand year old earth and that evolution's completely a lie. If you and Noah's Ark is completely true, and if you teach anything other than that, you are destroying the faith of good Christians. So who is on the ivory tower? Stop. You're gaslighting, Michael. You're gaslighting, and you're and you're the one projecting, and that's the irony here. It's, it's it's almost. If I was writing a comedy, I couldn't I couldn't come up with this stuff that you guys say. I mean, it is literally hilarious. You should listen to yourself objectively and compare what you say and what your critique is, and then actually look at the real world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these atheist scholars, they're just biased. They're out to surf Satan. And so it's like, yeah, that was pretty much Mike Winger's take. And Mike Winger has a pretty big audience. Maybe, I, I don't know how many followers, the seven, 800,000 followers. And that was Mike's whole position, that, that it's all propaganda. And, and you know, I, implicit in Mike's thing was that, the Satan's Guide to the Bible, and look, just look at the comments of, of his video and, and his followers, is that it's actually inspired by Satan. So stop. That, the, the, what you just caricatured as being false is, is actually very accurate. Now, what happens here is if you paint a broad brush of like everybody, yeah, of course, then it sounds ridiculous. I, you know, I get that. But you're, you're doing the same thing you're accusing the other side of doing. There is no broad brushstroke here. There's, there's quite a few, there's quite a few Christians, even pastors, who if you just took out the, if you just took out the history, would say, yeah, a lot of these things are indeed controversial and not settled. And there are Christians that, that agree with the, with the less inerrant side that there's Christian pastors that would say, yeah, okay. You know, Daniel was written in the second century, big deal. I don't care. So there's a lot of muds being flung around and it's just funny to go back and listen to when I read straight out of your own Bible. 
who's the one called to be gracious here? Like, I try to be gracious because I have something called empathy. And I try to be gracious because I just, you know, I like the world to be a better place. I'm not always gracious. But I don't have a Holy Spirit in me guiding me. I mean, if I'm gracious, if, if your guys' worldview is true, every time that I'm polite and gracious and kind, I am fighting against Satan, my father, who rules my life. So I ought to get some credit for that. Whereas you guys claim you have the Holy Spirit inside you. And yet you seem to forget what your Bible says all the time. Like the part where it says, love your enemy. The part where it says, turn the other cheek. The part where it says, if people are insulting you or cursing you, count it a blessing. Instead of whining about it like a bunch of little kids on a soccer field who just lost a soccer game. And you think the ref was unfair. That's what you sound like. A whiny nine-year-old. They'll say that we're accusing them of that. Meanwhile, throughout the documentary, he's constantly accusing Christians of being evil, bias, uh, hiding scholarship, just downright stupid. Okay, I won't belabor the point that I made just a minute, a few minutes ago about how we don't we don't need Satan or atheists to call out Christians for being evil, biased, and downright stupid. You can just go on YouTube and find Christians bashing other Christians from now. You, you, you could start watching that today in 2024. And I promise you, if the world lasts to 2,300 or 400 or 500 and YouTube's still around, you'll never run out of content of one group of Christians calling another group of Christians evil, biased, and downright stupid. Now, the thing is, I, Michael, I want let's speak man to man, Michael. Do you know in one of the Ten Commandments is don't is don't, besides don't lie is providing false witness and what you just did. So you said that the Satan's guide was was accusing Christians of being evil, biased, hiding scholarship, and downright stupid. Now I'm I I'm not gonna go. I don't have time to go back and rewatch the whole hour and a half, uh, but I did watch it, and I'm pretty sure that that accusing Christians of being evil was never said. Now, if I'm wrong, somebody can point that out. And I'm saying right now, I don't have time to go back and actually watch the whole video, but I'm pretty sure that nowhere in there did he say that Christians are evil. I don't think he said that. Now, biased, he may have implied or said they're biased. I don't know. But, you know, everyone has a bias. And we, we keep hearing that from Christians. Everyone's biased. Yeah, okay. So that that's sort of a non sequitur. Um, you know, we all agree some people are more biased than other ones. Now, hiding scholarship. He did accuse Christians, but this is this is where you're lying, Michael. You're you're you you're projecting or saying that that this hiding of scholarship is done like by oh, all Christians are hiding scholarships from well no, that it, that's not what the Satan's guide for Bible said. Again, I don't. I don't have time to go back and read it, rewatch the whole thing. But I'm pretty sure that Bart Ehrman said something to the effect of, "If your pastor went to like a mainline Protestant seminary, and he gave an example of Princeton, but that he didn't say only Princeton, that your pastor knows these things." So I think it was very clear. It was very clear to me that the that what they were saying was, if you have a pastor that was trained in a Protestant seminary in America and went through the program that most pastors that go through seminary go through, that he knows these things. And most of those pastors don't teach those things to their congregants. Now, both of those things, to my knowledge, are truth claims. Because, And, you know, when we're talking most or almost all of or average, it's it's hard to say. But I think the spirit of what he's saying, I'm going to stand on as being true. So when, when, when you, Michael, say that he's saying that about all pastors, like that's unfair. And, and the weird thing is, like, if we go back to what Eric said, Eric said, well, my pastor doesn't even know this stuff. Yeah, the Satan's guide uh, to the Bible, Eric, was not accusing uneducated pastors of hiding anything because if your pastor is that uneducated, then the accusation doesn't apply to him. He's just uneducated. 
Now, why you go to a church with an uneducated pastor, that's between you and the Lord. And I don't have a problem with it. Like I said, my mom, my mom was a, my mom wasn't a preaching pastor though. I will say that my mom was a counseling pastor. She was very loving and very kind and people loved my mother. She never once got up and taught about the authenticity of the book of Daniel. It would have been out of her league by a million miles. She didn't care about that. You know what my mom cared about? Loving people. That's what she cared about. You know what? You know what my mom, what, what my mom took away from the Bible? Love people. That's all she really needed. Now, the other thing, so the other, so the last thing, Michael, is you say downright stupid. There is nowhere in the Satan's Guide to the Bible that that I took away from it that that he was implying that Christians are, are downright stupid. In fact, I think the opposite was his point. I think the I think the point was not that they're stupid, which you're accusing him of accusing them of. No, he was accusing them of being very smart, but gatekeeping information from congregants and treating the congregants like they're stupid and they're not smart enough to figure this out. If you give people credit for being smart enough to figure this stuff out, again, as I said before, you should be happy about the Satan's Guide to the Bible. You should be happy that it was entertaining, that it was funny, and you should be super happy of, you know, uh, at this point, we're pushing a million views on that video in a couple years. Maybe it'll be three or four million views. You should be happy about that. Gives you something to talk about. It opens the door to discussion. You, and, but it sounds to me like you're afraid. It sounds to me like the one that thinks Christians are stupid is you. I don't think Christians are stupid. That's why I want them to read the Bible. <laughs> you get it? Like, I want Christians to go out and study this stuff like I did. Now, I did it after I, I did most of the studying after I was already an atheist. Yeah, because I, you know, I wanted to know. There you go. If you're a Christian... There ain't nobody on my side trying to gatekeep information. There ain't nobody on my side that wants to treat you like a child. There ain't nobody on my side that doesn't want you to read books. So he's he's accused, he's saying, putting in the word mouth of his caricature of Jesus, that all these caricatures that he thinks are thrust upon him. Meanwhile, he's caricaturing Christians throughout the entire documentary. He's saying we're hiding scholarship. Uh, but quite frankly, I mean. I'm sitting here going, no evidence for the Exodus? Like, oh, but we're not going to mention Kenneth Kitchen or James Hoffmeyer. I mean, to say there is no evidence for the Exodus is absurd. You can say the evidence that's presented for the Exodus is insufficient. Biblical scholars say. There is no archaeological evidence that would support an idea of a historical large-scale Exodus from Egypt. I'm sitting here going, no evidence for the Exodus? Like, large-scale Exodus from Egypt. I'm sitting here going, no evidence for the exodus? Like Large scale exodus from Egypt. So who's lying here, Michael Jones? You just said that they said that they claimed there was no evidence. But that's not what he said. He said there's no archaeological evidence for a large scale. And if you watch the Satan's Guide, this segues into inerrancy. Now, if you're not a Christian who believes in inerrancy, then these criticisms are not aimed at you and again you should embrace the satan's guide to the bible as being a good tool because it's now on your side now if you are arguing for inerrancy then you're obviously in a in a bad position because you have to say that all of the archaeological evidence that's missing you have to say well uh, absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence there could have been 2 million Jews wandering 40 years in the desert and they didn't leave evidence. He also goes on to explain how the early Israelite like encampments and so forth, when they dig that up, they don't find uh, the influence of in like the pottery and so forth from Egyptians. Now, this is, this is a huge topic. The, the point here is, OK, so I read I've read one or two of, of Dr. Josh's books on, you know, the atheist guide to the to the Old Testament about this issue and man it's so academic and now i love listening to him um and when i read his books I, like I, I like i said I, I think i've read two in fact i don't even think he's published the third one yet 
Anyways, it gets super ap- academic, and I'm interested in this topic, and it's still kind of hard for me to get through this stuff. And like half the time, I'm scratching my head, go, wait, wait a minute, what? But the the fact of the matter is, even you know, even you know, Michael Jones, you know, you know, because you're smart, you know, this is extremely problematic, extremely problematic for for Christians who land on inerrancy, it's they just have to keep saying we believe on faith. And that's really the point of this the next segment in there when he brings up inerrancy and then he has film clips of this conference. I, I don't know what it's called, some some Christian conference where they, they have this panel and they all talk about how important inerrancy is. If you're not in that camp, then you're actually agreeing with Satan on this one. And instead of criticizing him, you might as well join hands with him and and it and agree. Because guess what? This how many people in America think evolution is completely wrong and Noah's Ark is completely true and the earth is six thousand years old and believe the Bible is inerrant down to every last word. That's a lot of Christians. And and if you guys, if this if you panel, you know, Eric and and Fan and, and Rob and Michael, if you guys aren't in that camp, then the Satan's guide to the Bible, you're on the same side as them. You're just arguing about the details. Do you get it? But scholars have presented evidence for the Exodus, which we will cover here. To say otherwise is just a total misrepresentation of the actual playing field right now. So Okay, I'm probably going to wind this up pretty fast here. I'm not going to play the clips about the arguments of there's plenty of places online. And if you're a Christian or an atheist or anywhere in between and you're interested in this topic, go pick up some books and read about it. And I would never say don't read X. You can read any, like, if you want to read stuff from the Discovery Institute, I'm not going to tell you not to. Read it. If you want to read Michael Behe or Stephen Meyer's work or James Tour, knock yourself out. But the thing is, if you don't read both sides of an issue from good representations of people that know the issue, in other words, find the people that that the one side spend the most time trying to argue against and that's usually a pretty good idea of of the strongest argument in other words if you actually want to know something don't read the the weak and the straw man side read read the strongest sides you can find and it also comes down to personal style like you can go on amazon and get like a free t- i think you can get like 10% of a book for free as a sample to see if you like the author's style so go do go do that go pick up some now that's only that's only true in kindle part of the problem is a lot of the scholarship books like they're really expensive the ones published by you know uh school you know university presses you you have like a 50 dollar paperback and it's like are you kidding me so and but i will say this and i mean unless you're really into this and really wanting to be like hardcore scholarship you probably can get by with the layman's versions which is why say bar ehrman is so popular because he, he has a good writing style whether you agree with his conclusions or not don't say he's not a good writer he's obviously a good writer well you can you know most of his kindle books are like 10 bucks i think on on kindle ebooks and you can go read a sample and see if you'd like the style and um my point being is not i'm not trying to tell you who to read what i'm telling you you can't just read one side now that one of the criticisms of this panel is oh the satan's guide it's so one-sided are you honestly saying he should have made a three-hour documentary as if everybody hasn't been hearing the stuff on the other side since preschool and sunday school when they're little kids honestly come on be honest it wasn't one-sided the way that you're implying like Ha, ha, ha. It's probably the Jews. No, that's what, you, that's what this, this, oh, it was one-sided. It, di- it didn't have the time to go and develop all the counter arguments because it didn't have to. It was countering stuff everybody already thinks and believes if they're a Christian. 
<laughs> they don't need the argument. So I didn't get into politic into ap apologetics. Excuse me. I didn't get into apologetics during my Christian years. Why? Well, I didn't need it. I already believed 100%. I read Josh McDowell's evidence that demands a verdict when I was, you know, late teens, early 20s, and that settled it. The Bible said it. I believed it. That settled it. I believed it. Didn't need to study. Amen. I'm standing on faith. And God also convicted me and told me in my heart it was true. So come on. This, this, one, that it was one sided. That it's just a bizarre argument. It, just stop already. All right, would you guys watch some documentary on Ted Bundy or Jeffrey Dahmer and say, it was terrible. Netflix did a terrible job. It didn't, it was one sided. It did show it. It didn't show all the good stuff about Ted Bundy and, and Jeffrey Dahmer and all the reasons why they were abused as kids and didn't have free will. And, and it really wasn't Jeffrey Dahmer's fault when he was drilling little kids skulls and pouring acid to create sex zombies it wasn't really his fault like where was that argument i don't know i mean it probably exists you get my point here i think the satan's guide i think the satan's guide uh, to the bible i think this is a precursor to many more things coming down the pike guys so so get off your high horse Get off the ivory tower you're on, Michael Jones, because you're projecting there. You're the one being on the ivory tower. Get up, come down, and recognize that the all the vast majority in, of conflicts in Christendom are amongst Christians, not with the atheists. And humble yourself a little bit. Listen to the words of Jesus. If somebody insults you or is mean, take it as a blessing, and then. Admit to yourself that you're afraid. You're afraid of information. And you're also afraid. You know why you guys do this? Like, And you could accuse me of the same thing. Why do we do this? Well, maybe we're trying to convince ourselves. Maybe I'm trying to convince myself that there's no God, so I, I do this YouTube and I do study this stuff so I can keep sinning as if my girlfriend would let me sin. Jesus, I would. That's a whole other story. Um yeah she runs a tight she, my atheist girlfriend runs a much tighter ship than any of the christians in my life in the past so the the problem the problem at the end of the day is is you guys seem to be in some kind of weird bizarre bubble like come out of come out of that bubble and look in the future if if you guys are really trying to defend in fact that was that was michael join michael jones point in his in the short I referred to earlier, where he would, where he doesn't want to tell his denomination or what church he goes to because reason, reason, reason. He said it's, he said it's because he's he's trying to defend Christian Christendom. Well, the problem, what? Who's a Christian, Michael? When I listen to you, I get a different story than when I listen to Ray Comfort and Mike Winger and Alan Park and Sean and McDowell. They get together and do little chats and and love bomb each other. But I can go to other channels where it says those guys are completely lost. And then they'll come back on and say, no, I've disproved. The Council of Trent is completely wrong and he didn't refute me at all. The Catholic Church is corrupt and wrong. And then, you know, Council of Trent seems like a nice guy to me. He comes on and says, here's why Catholicism is true. And on and we can go. We could do this for hours and hours and hours and hours. That's where your fight is, dude. Go, yeah, I do a series called um, Faithful Fridays, Divided Devotion. It's, it's the, the premise is just read the upper room prayer, the farewell prayer in John. Jesus said, Father, make them one like you and I are one so that the world will know you sent me. Guess what? You guys aren't united. You're totally divided. I, as a skeptic and an atheist, have every right from the mouth of Jesus himself to believe that Jesus was not sent by Father. By the Father God. Jesus said to me when I read John, he says, Hey, hey, Michael, I'm I I'm praying to God that the church would be united and unified, so that you'll know as an atheist that as as the world that that God the Father sent me. So Jesus says that to me through the words of, of the Gospel of John. And I read that and I take Jesus at his word. So taking Jesus at his word. 
God did not send Jesus. So if I was going to be religious, I would look to Judaism perhaps, or maybe Hinduism or something else, or maybe just be a, a deist like Thomas Paine. So that's where your battleground is. So again, I'm going to reiterate the, the Satan's guide to the Bible is your friend, guys. This, this, that thing's your friend. And if you're gonna if you're gonna take it as your enemy because you're inerrant about the Bible, dude, you guys got a world of hurt coming. Because that that sticking to inerrancy is part of the reason Christianity is crumbling like a building in an earthquake in Santiago, Chile in the 1970s. Oh I sensed a lot of projection, just seeing a lot of the accusations being thrown out against Christians. Meanwhile, that's what they were doing. So I found it quite demeaning, quite ivory tower mentality. Like we're up here, you dumb Christians down here. And then they expect us to come to the table and not feel frustrated and like we're being cast out or talked down to. Michael, Michael, Michael. If the Christian story is true, then nothing an atheist says should be anything to you but an opportunity and a door to help them get saved or a blessing if they're being mean to you you don't want to when you do you know what you just said they're not they're not making any way for us to come to the table with what and then they expect us to come to the table and not do you know what that means to come to the table with the other side, to come to the table with another human? You're saying that, oh, I'm so hurt. I'm so hurt by the Satan's guide to the Bible. I don't want to play with you. Does that, is, that the, is that your takeaway from the New Testament and from Jesus' message, Michael? There should not be one thing on YouTube in public of you attacking, demeaning, calling into the motives of atheists like yeah, I don't, we could get into a whole argument about the right way to attack your fellow christians like did you go to them one-on-one -on -one? did you take it to an elder you know like there, paul has a whole outline of that before you go before you go into the into the public that, that's between you all that's in-house stuff this is out of the house stuff when dealing with the out of the house stuff I don't know, dude. I don't see anything in the Bible where it says to do the stuff you're doing. Uh, it, what I read, in the, like if I was in your shoes and I wanted to do what I feel the, the, the model is, like from reading Francis Schaeffer's No Little People, I suggest you read that, Michael, because your spirit comes across completely the opposite of what Francis Schaeffer portrays in that book. You come across as thinking those little people should be demeaned, and criticized and called out. That's not what Francis Schaeffer wrote in that book at all. You know, he asked a question in that book, and I, I like to bring it up to Christians because I know the answer. When was the last time you had a drug addict in your house who vomited on the sheets? Probably never. Why is that? Was Francis Schaeffer wrong? I don't have you read, have you read Bonhoeffer? So Bonhoeffer is a little difficult to read, and I have not read a lot of Bonhoeffer. But my takeaway, my takeaway from Bonhoeffer is, is, I forget the word, but it's like life together. And it's weird to me because when I read, when I read these guys and when I read the, the Bible, like the New Testament stuff, the, the stuff about Jesus and, and the book of Acts and so forth, and then I compare it to you all, I don't see any, any, any similarity at all. Oh, except with the Pharisees and the legalists. That's what I see. So what? What if you had done a whole video? You know what your video should have been? Your video should have been, you should have started off with a prayer like this. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now asking you to create a bridge with the producers of the Satan's Guide to the Bible and those that are receiving that message. We want to create a bridge of friendship, Father God, because we love those people. And Lord, uh, sometimes we're hurt by their mocking voices and their and what we we get our feelings hurt. But we know, Lord, that we're supposed to take that as a blessing. So where we're weak, Lord, we ask you to stand in, stand in the gap for us, Lord Jesus, because we want to be 
We want to be a light on a hill. We want to show the love that you show, Jesus, to the atheists and skeptics who are listening to the words of the Satan's Guide to the Bible. And Lord, if you could create an opportunity for us to talk to the producers of that film or or some of the scholars in that film or other people that do, Lord, make that door open because we want to love them. We want to love them into the kingdom, Lord. And Lord, help us stay away from strife and coming across as, as being ourselves on mighty high towers. So Lord Jesus, please um, use that, what what's meant to tear down, use that to build up, Lord, because you work everything together for those that love you for good. So we stand on that in Jesus' name. Now, you could, if you prayed something like that and, you, and then you said, look, uh, you know, we believe there's very strong evidence that the the book of Daniel was was written late and inspired by God, and we believe very strongly that when when Jesus talks about His um, second coming, like the, the the kingdom coming in power, that we really strongly believe that the transfiguration was uh, was accomplishing that. So we have a lot of words for. Um, answering the critics thing but that's not the issue the issue is a heart issue and 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 then you would you would use that as a you would use that as a tool to open conversation you wouldn't throw up barriers by criticizing openly all the stuff you find wrong you would accept it because a christian's supposed to be gracious and humble and loving and charitable you should be angel manning the other side. Now, when you're having a, you know, an intellectual debate, I, I, I also think you should angel man there, but you should definitely, you should definitely fight hard for your side, keeping in mind to steel man the other side because it doesn't do good to break down the straw man. Like understand the other argument and have, have okay. So for instance, I noticed in the in the in the videos, you know, when I was watching your guys's video in the chat stream there was all these at kip davis at kip at kip like people were asked and i realized where's i don't see anything from kip like why are people talking to kip but so i realized at some point michael just blocked or deleted kip now you can disagree with kip davis all day long his conclusions don't you dare don't you dare say he's not smart don't you dare say he didn't spend a huge amount of his life in christian being a christian i mean once saved always saved might be true i've heard that taught very strongly by smart people in fact i used to have i used to own a ryrie study bible once saved always saved so skip uh, dr kill I might be in heaven. Like you all might be stuck with us for eternity. Don't you think you guys should be offering the olive branch and not all this freaking hatred? It's disgusting, honestly. And I tell you the truth. And I say this again. If Christianity is true, I renounce Christ and I accept hell. I do not want to be in eternity with, with you all kind of people. I despise most Christi Christians who are arrogant, exclusive who think most of the world's going to hell who think they have all the answers who come across as arrogant and self-righteous and guess what i know atheists sometimes come across as arrogant and self-righteous but they don't have the holy spirit if you guys look like the world you're proof again to me that there's no such thing as a holy spirit you certainly don't act like it. You certainly don't act gracious. Now, wait, I, I want to be honest here. Uh, Rob and Than actually came across as, as reasonably, uh, or maybe even a lot gracious. Like, like and I don't think they talked that. Some of the stuff Rob said was just academic and I got lost through part of it. But when he actually spoke about what the kind of stuff I'm talking about, he came across as being gracious and kind, especially his comments about um, uh, Hector Avalos. And Fan, I think, as well, came across as being pretty gracious. But you know, you know, Eric and Michael, you guys come across as self-righteous, arrogant, condescending, and you, you come across as if you don't. You want to be right. You want to win the argument, but you don't care if those people go to hell. 
go listen to some of the old sermons from the from the from the Jesus movement in the 70s with the hippies when they just loved people is that so hard is that so much to ask from you all you think your intellectualism gets you to heaven come on I'd rather hang out with nice people that are wrong than smart people that are right but are assholes. And that includes for all of eternity. Just stop. Just think about how you come across. And I know you both have a lot of fans. Yeah, but you're preaching to the choir. The rest of us just think you're buffoons half the time. And if that's insulting, count it a blessing. Unless you don't believe the words of Jesus. It's, I'm glad I'm not a Christian anymore. Because I see how much damage I used to do. And I'm sorry. If somebody wanders across this video or any of my videos that, that used to be in ministry with me. Or maybe a high schooler that I used to be a leader in. Or anything like that. I am truly sorry. I was an arrogant prick. And I'm sorry. I acted like I knew stuff I didn't know. And I'm sorry. It's just the same story we get all the time when it comes to this kind of crap. So, yeah, I got asked by numerous people to respond to that. And uh, here we are. So, you guys want to dive right in? Any other questions before we go? Yes. I'm ready to go. Well, everybody, I'm Michael Beverly. This about wraps it up. Now, if you're interested in all their counter arguments, go watch their thing. It would be pointless for me to... Like, I'm not trying to just show one side. Go listen to their, it's like two and a half or three hours or whatever of them doing their counter arguments. And as even Eric said in the beginning of this, they've answered these things over and over and over and over again. So it's kind of funny how uh, Michael Jones just said, oh, I got a lot of requests to respond to this. Dude, Eric just said you guys have responded to this ad infinium. Like, so take that to heart. It's not the arguments here that's the big deal. Anybody that's in this space knows the arguments of why Daniel is late or Daniel is early or that the transfiguration is the proof text you need to show that Jesus wasn't wrong when he said he was coming back. Blah, blah, blah. This is a heart thing, dude. This is about how you portray yourself. So my other video, if you haven't seen it, is about calling out Mike Winger's slander. And if anyone knows a way to get to Mike Winger or wants to point it out, you can pass along my video or pass along the message. Dude, when you slander people and lie and, and, you, and you do do what you did, all you're doing is building walls. You're, you're just preaching to the choir like, dude, those guys, all your sycophants are already going to heaven. Don't you care about the lost? And if you care about the lost, and this goes for the four of you guys on this panel, if you care about the lost, I'm not saying don't argue your position on academic stuff. I, I love to talk about this stuff, and most of us in the space do. There's nothing wrong with it. But check your fucking attitudes at the door, dudes. You're not helping Jesus. You're, and I'm saying I'm going to pretend I'm a Christian. I'm going to poe a Christian for a minute. You guys are wounding the Holy Spirit. You're making, you're making, you're, you're portraying Christianity as arrogant, self-righteous, and all the things people hate about it. You're hurting Jesus. Jesus doesn't need you to win arguments for him. Jesus doesn't need you to prove that your proof text is better than Kip Davis's proof text. Jesus doesn't need you to defend him against Bar Ehrman. Jesus needs you to love people. And it's fine if your online hobby or your online business is, is, you know, talking about academic stuff and even arguing, arguing vigorously. Like two Christians can be MMA fighters and get in the ring and, and or a Christian and an atheist could get in the ring as MMA fighters or on the golf course or in playing a softball game. Nobody wants to play chess with somebody that's so below their level that they win every game easily that's not fun so i appreciate the strong intellectual arguments but 
but you're hurting Jesus. Jesus doesn't want this, all these accusations. Accusations are from the enemy. Jesus wants you to extend love and courtesy. That's what angel man in the other side is. Do you really think the guys that produce the Satan's guide from the Bible are actually worshiping Satan? Or that they actually want people to go to hell? Or they're actually evil people? You think I'm an evil person? You think Bart Ehrman and Hector Avalos? You think Hector Avalos is in hell right now? Honestly? Because if you think that, if you think Hector's burning in hell, you're just a bad person. And none of these issues have anything to do with anything. You're just a, you're just a bad person. You're just a misanthrope. So back, I'm put back, I'm come back to my atheist person side. Like, if I was a Christian, I would say those kind of things to you. Like, st stop being arrogant. Start showing love. Now, as an atheist, as an atheist, hey, this stuff's fun. Keep it up, brothers. Keep on, keep on. Mike Winger's doing more to make atheists than Richard Dawkins could ever hope. The more Alan Parr and Sean McDowell and John MacArthur and and yada, the more you guys talk, the more people leave the church. So keep it up. I keep on trucking, guys. Go Satan. <sighs> this is Michael Beverly, and I am closing this one down. Thank you. If you enjoy this at all. If you like my style, please share. I'm a, still a tiny channel. And subscribe, like, and have a good day. It sucked. It sucked. It sucked. It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> right? I want to be somebody that is an authority on this. So what do I do? Well, like, I think people just say, well, if I just, if I just read, you know, the right people, or if I, if I just... You know, get under the the right scholar on YouTube or something, and then I read what they tell me. Like then, then I can I can I can battle with the best of them, mm -hmm. and it can it, it's a it can seem that you really have a command of the data. It can feel like you have a command of the data, and you just you just don't. You've only moved a couple feet down that hallway. You just don't know it, and uh, so then it builds this this confidence that then you hear people say when they get in frustrating circumstances, oh, so-called Dr. Bowen, so-called Dr. Davis, right? And, uh, and that's what that, that sort of thing.